Okay, I said the next uh, video that I would do would be about what happened and when I sort of did a run through it was like 40 minutes plus. So I'm going to do this version which is an abbreviated version and then I'll do another version uh, which is longer. It turns out that uh, Leah even captured uh, some of uh, the symptoms, I guess. So we have to rewind 30 years to back when I was somewhere around 30. I, uh, <clears throat> I had the flu, I went to the doctor, the doctor heard something in my chest, said, we'll check it again once you're over the flu, which he did. And there was still a noise there. So he sent me for an echocardiogram. Echocardiogram came back as a uh, minor or medium sort of uh, prolapsed mitral valve or floppy heart valve, he called it. And um, so the, uh, the advice was that I take a, a penicillin buff before I have any um, dental work done. That was, the, that was what I had to do. So, and he said check every, you know, five or so years, um, but uh, life gets in the way. So, came to me being 50, 10 years ago roughly, 10, 11 years ago, uh, I go for my 50 year old checkup. Oh, hey, there's a noise there in your chest. I said, oh, yeah, that's my floppy heart valve. So, the doctor sends me for another echocardiogram, she sends me for a nuclear study. And uh, for a stress test, they come back with a, oh, you've got a mild prolapse mitral valve. Uh, but the doctor sends me to a cardiologist. So I go visit the cardiologist, who basically reiterates the same story, but he says, we're going to monitor this on a yearly basis. So every year I go and do a echocardiogram. I go see him in his uh, rooms and we do a stress test on the treadmill there. Nothing ever changes, never had a symptom from it at all. But uh, yeah, I had this uh, floppy heart valve. So in 2022, around September time frame, I got some sort of bug which led to another bug and another bug and another bug. And it wasn't COVID, but it was over six weeks of me feeling absolutely shocking, like um, drained, head cold, throat, all that sort of stuff. So when it got to August 2023, a year later, um, I suddenly started feeling run down. And I thought, oh, geez, it's the same thing again, you know, end of winter. And it sort of dragged on. Um, and so I was, I was trying to ignore it. I also had this cough. And uh, yeah, anyway, on the 10th of uh, October, I woke up early in the morning gasping for air. Oh, had a nightmare or something, went to the loo, went back to bed, uh, fell asleep, woke up gasping for air. Gee, no, this isn't right. Um, and uh, yeah, fell asleep again, woke up gasping for air. Stop, ah, that's it. I've had enough. It's a terrible feeling to not be able to catch your breath. So I, um, I said to the wife, change of plans for today. We're heading to the hospital. So we get to the hospital, go through all the rigmarole to get in there. Um, they couldn't see anything. I'm all hooked up to a fired lead, I think it was, into the monitor. And uh, they couldn't see anything. So they have a wing there at, at the hospital that they built for COVID that had never been used. And so I got moved down there into a room on my own. Um, and uh, it was I was getting really tired by now. I, started falling asleep guess what i wake up gasping for air call the nurse nurse comes in they look at the monitor the doctor looks at the monitor can't see anything so if it happens again call us straight away so i fall asleep i wake up gasping for air the nurse is walking by the room so i call her straight away so they're all standing around looking at this monitor so the monitor doesn't show anything you can't see anything wrong we're going to take you back to the er and we're going to, you know, you'll go to a room in the long term um, stay. So we go back. I get carted back on the on the on the bed, of course. And we get in there. They plug me into the machine that's in the ER there in that room, and it goes berserk. 
all alarms going off, flashing lights, the works. They reset it, does it again, does it again. My heart rate was going from 110 up to 148, 150, and then straight back down to 110. So it was, it was doing it so fast, obviously the other machines couldn't pick it up, but this one could. And the, uh, the monitor that I wear uh, for uh, my cardiac thing says clean sensor. So anyway, they gave me a beta blocker and that calmed it down and then I was all right. So they transferred me, or by well, now they got in touch with my cardiologist, they transferred me to a private hospital. I get to the hospital, it's one o'clock in the morning, so I don't see my cardiologist till the next morning, but I'm settled in there and I, I have a reasonable night's sleep. So the next day the cardiologist rocks up and he says, look, you might need a, uh, you might need a stint or something like that. He's going to do an angiogram, check it all out, and we'll fix it. So I go into this uh, angiogram, and they do that. Um, that's through that, did that through my wrist up into my heart. Um, and I come out of that, and he basically says, "You have the arteries of a teenager. There's nothing wrong. We can't. There's no, nothing to stint." Um, so he's going to call a surgeon in. Um, meanwhile they decide to send me for a CT uh, to check uh, me for uh, lung cancer. They do that because the contrast is still in my body from the angiogram, it clips the top of the kidneys and that shows that the kidneys are swollen. So they call in the kidney surgeon and the kidney doctor and uh, they send me for a lower um, abdomen scan this time and it comes back that I'm retaining fluid in my bladder so I have to have an IDC. The nurse couldn't get it in. It had to be done under anaesthetic, minor anaesthetic. Don't do anything that takes the slightest possible chance that you're going to need work done on your kidneys. I tell you what, it hurts more than anything else I've ever felt in my life. So anyway, they um, they find that the bottom of my bladder is swollen. Okay, so my kidneys have restricted flow down into my bladder and I've got restricted flow out which is preventing my bladder from emptying. So they put the catheter in to drain that. Then the uh, surgeon comes in and goes oh something's wrong with that and when he puts the catheter in he did a prostate exam he said doesn't really like that so they arranged to do a, uh, a biopsy but they need a special machine for that so stuck in there for a few days um, and then they do the biopsy uh, the biopsy comes back as uh, this uh, hormone sensitive prostate cancer so a couple of days later they send me for a PET scan and find out that I've got cancer in a couple of other places in the lumbar, cervical, spine, hip and so that's the metastatic part of the uh, what I've got so now they're trying to nurse my kidneys back to health so that the heart doctors can take over. Anyhow, they say, my, my heart has reduced pumping function because of this extra fluid that I've been carrying. Um, and they decide that I'm going to have to have this heart valve fixed. So surgeon arranged for that. I go in and I have open heart surgery to correct the mitral valve. Um, and after you know, a couple of days in ICU, back in my room, I have another echocardiogram and uh, my heart's back to normal. Um, everything is normal. No heart valve, floppy heart valve, whatever you want to call it. Um, no reduced pumping function. My heart is normal, except it has this minor little flutter, but it's consistent. So st they're still looking at that. Uh, but ostensibly my heart is normal. So that's good. Now we're back to fixing the uh, prostate cancer. So I see a, 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 an oncologist. The oncologist recommends six rounds, three weeks apart of uh, this docetaxel. And that's where we're at. Um, it's, uh, what is it today? Today is uh, Saturday, January the 20th. And so on Thursday, because Friday's public holiday, um, I'll be going for round two. So 
stay tuned for the detailed version of this. Um, that might answer questions you might have. If not, post your, an your questions in the comments and I'll, um, I'll try to answer them as best I can. So my mouth's back to normal in terms of symptoms. Um, my taste is pretty much back to normal. And so um, I'm really looking forward to uh, the next round on Thursday. Let's hope the symptoms aren't any worse than just dysfunctional taste. See you next time.